Today we're going to teach you how to put a infant cremains into their urn. And we have two types of blankets on the table right now. And the first one on the table right now is a um, quilt kind, so it's solid flannel. And the pink one up at the top is knitted. So the knitted one has holes in it. So you want to make sure that when you're using one with holes that you put maybe a Kleenex over it. Under so it. no no cremains will fall through the blankets and um, but we we have someone that donated these little bags to us so we're going to use bags to put the cremains in so Michael's going to open the plastic box and this is how your cremains will come from the coroner's office and um, they actually have a coin that comes on the top that's um, um, tied, tied to it and so you take that coin off and sometimes it's a strong zip tie, so you want something strong to cut that zip tie because it's pretty strong plastic. So once the um, the cremains are out of the out of the out of the box, you're going to pour them into that bag. And I'm going to help Michael so we don't spill. As you'll see, the the, rem the remains on this one are very powdery. Um, so you want to make sure you're pouring nice and slow because we're not in any big hurry here because one we don't want to spill and also when it's really powdery like this you don't want a, cl a cloud of dust to come up because we want to make sure the kid in its entirety gets to his or her final resting spot this is a lot of cremains and as I said this one is very powdery it's been my experience that sometimes it's powdery like this other times it's almost like uh, like grains of sand in it. It's very coarse with little tiny uh, bone fragments and the like in it. So each one is different. Um, just like all of us uh, with our, in our own unique way. And sometimes you'll get a cloud, a puff of, of ash come out and um, it's just kind of the baby's way of saying we love you, we don't want to leave you, we're having fun messing with you. So um, this is the kind of the fun yeah. part. And if there's anything here, like here's a little grain, uh, you just make sure it gets back in there. Yeah. So then so, we're going to zip tie this shut. And then... So, okay, so Alyssa, there's still residue in this bag. What happens with the bag? What do you, what do you want done? So what you're going to do is you're going to take that bag home in the little container, because there's still some might be in the bottom of that container too. So once you get home, buy a special plant or make a special place in your yard for a little garden or a special plant and then clean this cremains with a with a like a water bottle over that plant and so the, the babies will be still laid to rest in a special spot because we don't want to throw that bag away until the cremains are totally gone from it mm -hmm. so that's special it could even be if there's a municipal uh, park that has like a memorial garden of mm -hmm. some type yes. something like that yes. okay make it the same spot every time yeah and then you will be surprised that what happens to the areas that you sprinkle these because sometimes the plants you're doing it to will really flourish. So now Michael's going to try to open one of the urns. This particular urn was made for uh, by Brian Sutliff who was um, bit making urns for the garden as his Eagle Scout project. So these are special urns and Brian earned his Scout uh, Eagle Scout badge in uh, 2014 with the uh, Golden Empire Council in Sacramento area. So we're real excited about him being able to do this for us. And as you might see behind us, we have a whole lot of urns because everyone has their own idea of what an urn should look like. And I kind of like it because just as the children are unique, why can't the urns be unique? And even where you have like uh, Brian with his Eagle Scout project, it was all the same wood and everything, but, you know, the grain would be pointed a different way. Maybe there's a bit of a bird's eye in one of them. So they're all still unique. All right, there you are, Alyssa. And as you can see, this is, it's, it's fairly large. Fairly large. So now we're going to, um, so once the cremains are in their little bag, um, we're going to fold the blanket around them just like you would fold any blanket around any little baby. We're just swaddling them. And once they're put in here, we just swaddle them and fold the top down so that we have a little tiny swaddled baby. 
And so what happens is we're going to put the baby face down in the urn. So he's face down, and you can see him upside down with the, with the folds on the bottom. And then he, each baby, <laughs> he's getting a birdie. Each baby gets a toy that's been given especially for them. If they have a beanie baby, you want to take the tags off. Because we don't advertise for the rest of their eternity. And so you're going to take the bird. This one particularly is a bird. And you're going to put him in there with him so that they have their toy. And then Michael's going to put the lid back on. And um, then once the lid is screwed back on and we turn it right side up, the baby's folds are face up. And that way we have him nice and secure inside of his box. And you'll see that there's a variety of urns here, like Michael mentioned. And today we're putting nine babies in their urns to have for a service at Garden of Innocence in the Bay Area in San Francisco tomorrow. So one thing you see, in, as soon as I said that all the urns are unique, and you see two urns that are identical, that's because in our service tomorrow we have a pair of twins. So I wanted to make sure that uh, they stayed twins. And for the rest of eternity, they, they'll even get this exact same toy. So, uh, so in, each of your, in each of your urns, there'll be a toy. And then at the service, when you're doing your service, you want to set another Beanie Baby right beside him to sit beside him during the service. And if you're uh, putting your urn into a niche in the ground, then that, that toy will go in the niche and be beside them in their vault. So they'll, they'll, they'll still have two toys instead of one. Up here in San Francisco, the babies will come out of these urns and go into a little box inside the, the niche. So you wonder, okay, how do we keep them straight? Who do we know who's who? There's no names? Nothing on here. Well, there is, because we just make labels and put them on there so that in the service, they'll, they'll be in the procession the same way their poems are read and everything. So when we bring this baby, you'll know that this is baby Lyndon, and we'll say, please welcome Lyndon to the Garden of Innocence and then he will be escorted by the Knights of Columbus and placed on the table for the service here in San Francisco. So that's pretty much how you put a baby in an urn. You'll have left over this plastic box, so you want to take it home also because even though the babies were in a bag, sometimes there's still a little bit of cremains in the bottom, not in this particular one, but you want to rinse this one out over the plant too. Better uh, safe than sorry. And then once you're done, you can throw them both away. Uh, the box you can keep because you can use it maybe for a fundraiser to put something in or or donation box or something you can use it for later. Well, it's also a good visual aid that, you know, the sum total of a child's life is now in this little plastic urn, and we can do better than that. Yes. And that's Baby in an Urn 101. <laughs> <laughs> and this is me. I'm Elisa, founder of Hi, Garden I'm Michael. Innocence. Michael Gunn, he is the director of Garden of Innocence Bay, Bay Area. Area in San Francisco. Thanks so much. Thank you for helping us at the Garden.